The Armand Bayou Nature Center is one of the largest urban wilderness preserves in the United States, and it is right here in metropolitan Houston. Today we are going to visit Armand Bayou and we'll take a look at its prairies, its woodlands, and its marshy areas. Our tour guide will be ecologist Mark Kramer. Good morning. Welcome to Arm and Bayou Nature Center. We manage about 2,500 acres of grasslands, forested areas, and one of the most unique waterways, Arm and Bayou, which is one of the last remaining unchannelized bayous in the Houston area. Arm and Bayou was recognized as an area that was worthy of preservation back in the 1960s. As human development was encroaching so rapidly in our area, it began to become recognized to some of our environmental leaders that if some of these large tracts of wild land weren't preserved, we'd likely lose it all to development. Our tour today is going to be composed of three unique and vanishing ecosystems. We're going to start with one of the rarest of those plant communities, which are grasslands, and more specifically, coastal tallgrass prairies. We'll also tour briefly some of our wooded areas, our forest areas, and uh, we're going to take a brief boat tour to take a look at some of our marshy areas that are here. Our first stop is going to be with coastal tallgrass prairies. Interestingly, many Houstonians have never heard the term coastal tallgrass prairie, but as it turns out, those prairies really are our ecological heritage. If we could travel back in time two, three, four hundred years and fly over Harris County and the surrounding area, prairies would have dominated the landscape. They would have covered by sheer volume the great bulk of the land surface below us. Coastal tallgrass prairies get their name because they largely occur immediately adjacent to the Gulf of Mexico, growing from the edge of the ocean inland about 50 miles and running roughly from Lafayette, Louisiana, all the way down to Corpus Christi, Texas. And it's that coastal element that defines them between those prairies of the Great Plains because we get a lot of rain here. And this past few years, we have really had almost historic rainfall levels with frequent flood events. That rainfall means these prairies are filled with prairie wetlands, wetlands that provide habitat, wetlands that improve water quality, prairie wetlands that help to mitigate flooding in our area. So the preservation of these big, large grasslands and natural areas provide green infrastructure for our area, which means we get these ecosystem services provided for us free, which help to improve the water qualities of Galveston Bay, provide habitat for wildlife, and also minimize flooding events from those floodwaters rising up into our homes. Coastal tallgrass prairies are also very diverse plant communities. Diversity is a word that ecologists use to categorize how many plants are in the assembly of the entire plant community. And some of those most diverse plant communities in grasslands may have over 300 different species. So lots of different plants compose a prairie plant community. That diversity of plant life supports a great diversity of animal life, particularly insect life. And increasingly, we're growing to appreciate those varied number of insects like butterflies, pollinators, grasshoppers, huge amount of insect and other animal life that lives in these grasslands. Sadly for us, today, those coastal tall grass prairies are almost completely gone. Experts estimate that less than 1% of coastal tall grass prairies still survive. So we're standing in a coastal flatwoods forest. Forests are a second and important plant community around the Bayou City. Uh, this forest is mostly made up of oaks and elms in the forest canopy. So when we talk about a forest canopy, we're talking about the tallest trees in the forest. And there are probably five or six different oak species and three different members of the elm family that are here. But as you can hear, I hope, there is a great diversity of life that lives in this forest. Lots of insects and birds make their home here. Uh, we are at the peak of the summer season as we're filming. and There is a real biophony of calls or songs from the cicadas in the woods around us right now. 
That is an insect that is dependent on these types of forested plant communities. Another important element of these forests are the wetland areas, as you see behind me here. Uh, these forests, for many months out of the year, hold standing water. And as we all know, wetlands play an important, a, a number of important functions. Uh, this standing water is held and slowed and then slowly released down into the local area bayous and streams. And the water as it flows out of these wetlands is much more uh, quality water, high quality purified water. Increasingly, it's difficult to find these types of forested areas left in Harris County. Harris County is the most densely populated county in Texas, so lots of people live here. And as humans have continued to occupy the area, our landscape has been dramatically transformed into an urban environment. So these types of remaining natural areas, such as these coastal flatwoods forests, are very important to protect and preserve. Uh, these coastal flatwoods are a little different than other forested areas in that most of this standing water behind me has come from runoff that's gotten captured before it reaches the bayou. Many bottomland forested areas are flooded, but it's the rising waters of the rivers that flood the forest. So it's actually a different water source that provides the standing water that you see behind us in the coastal flatwoods forest. I just happened to be standing beside the only native palm in the Houston area, palmetto. Uh, palmettos are indicative of wet areas and often found in forested areas. And not only are they the only native palm to the Houston area, they are often are referred to as the trunkless palm. And as you look at the palmetto here, it's difficult to see the base of the plant. But actually, palmettos do have a trunk. It's just that the entirety of the trunk is below the soil surface. So beautiful member of the palm family uh, right here in the forest of Armand Bayou Nature Center. We're on Armand Bayou. Armand Bayou is probably the best preserved remnant bayou left in the Bayou City. Many of our bayous have been straightened, widened, and deepened in an effort to try to minimize flooding in the Houston area. And that channelization process helps to move floodwaters downstream more rapidly. Armand Bayou has never been channelized, and that makes it very unique, uh, not just historically, but also ecologically. And a lot of the vegetation that you see along the shoreline of Armand Bayou are wetland types that are very valuable to us. These tall grasses that are sticking up above the water surface behind me are called smooth cord grass. This is the type of marsh vegetation that occurs all around Galveston Bay and in the lower portion of Armand Bayou. These types of marshy areas play a critical role in the early life cycle of many of the fish and shellfish that we like to catch and eat in Galveston Bay. The youngsters of redfish, speckled trout, flounder, mullet, drum, shrimp, blue crabs, they all begin their life in this tidal marsh, these tall grassy areas. And at the end of the summer, those youngsters have used that nursery habitat to protect them and feed them, and they've grown to be three or four inches long. At the end of the summer season, the cooling waters signal it's time to migrate back out into the Gulf, and that's where we catch those fish to eat as part of our seafood industry. Over 90% of the commercial and recreational fish that we like to catch and eat in Galveston Bay starts in this type of tidal marsh plant community. However, one of the challenges that these types of marshy areas and plant communities face is from a plant that doesn't belong here. Uh, if you look closely, you can see some beautiful blooming purple flowers and some floating vegetation which is lying between me and that tall marshy area. This is water hyacinth. Water hyacinth is native to the Amazon basin. And it first came to the Armand Bayou area in the mid 1990s. It's a very problematic plant all around the Gulf states. Water hyacinth is one of the fastest growing plants on the planet. And under ideal growing conditions, this type of invasive plant doubles its surface area every 10 days. So you might imagine that explosive growth rate 
over time as it doubles its area continually, it can completely blanket the water surface. And that's very problematic for a number of reasons. Ecologically, that blanket of plant material stops atmospheric oxygen from soaking down into the water through the process of diffusion. And almost all of that aquatic life that I was just describing to you relies on oxygenated water to survive. So without the oxygen in the water, the entire aquatic ecosystem can collapse because of this highly invasive water hyacinth that you see behind me here. So all around the Gulf states, ecologists now recognize that the best management method to control water hyacinth is through the use of herbicides. And today, we are hiring a contractor in a big airboat to come out and spray an aquatic version of Roundup, which kills the plant. It's the most economical method of controlling water hyacinth. And as we get closer to the water hyacinth's edge here, I'm going to pull one of these plants up so that we can actually take a look at the individual plant. Most water hyacinths and other invasive species has a long list of adaptive strategies that enable it to outcompete its neighbors. So water hyacinth produces these beautiful purple flowers, but it can also reproduce by breaking off into pieces. It's a floating plant, so if you look closely, you can see there are a number of these bulbs that serve as flotation devices, and in a big flood event, the uh, water hyacinth travels freely downstream to colonize new areas. But in addition to reproducing by making seeds through the flowering process, water hyacinth can also reproduce through fragmentation. So this is a small plant, a pup plant, and in time, this small plant will break off, and through this process of fragmentation, it also can reproduce asexually just by breaking off one, two, three. So the plant has the ability to reproduce rapidly and colonize easily because it floats as a floating plant. This Armand Bayou is one of the largest urban wilderness areas in the country. It's an opportunity for you to get out of town and actually not have to leave town to do it. These beautifully preserved 2,500 acres offer an opportunity for people to hike, to paddle, and to learn about the diversity of life that's right in their own backyard. I hope you'll come and visit us. Thank you. Scott. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job. Thank you.